So today I want to talk about what makes you quote unquote ugly. Have you ever noticed that when people in the African American community like to call out quote unquote ugly mixed race people, they tend to call out women like Tiny, T.I.'s wife. They tend to call out women like Ella Mai. They call out women like Miss Mulatto and other celebrities who have conventionally non-white features. Have you ever noticed that the anti-blackness in the black community actually jumps out when it comes to mixed race people? So if you are a mixed race and let's say you have a prominent nose, kind of like Kiki Wyatt or like Hazel E, let's say you have features that are non-white, you have broader features or you have like maybe a large nose in particular, suddenly you are considered ugly. But if I were to call out a dark-skinned, unambiguous woman with a West African nose or with a large nose, I would be called all types of colorist, texturist, and featurist. Have you ever noticed that African features are only ugly if they are on a light-skinned person? African features are only considered ugly if they're on a mixed race person. But if you have African features and you are dark skinned and unambiguous, then you are suddenly pretty. I've watched YouTubers like Flower Tower or I Am Aloho or other black women empowerment content creators, and whenever they're calling a mixed race person unattractive, I've noticed that the mixed race person that they tend to refer to as unattractive, that person almost never has white features. Usually it's a mixed race person with non-white features. A lot of people in the African American community won't admit that they don't like big noses on women. Unless you're unambiguous and you have a larger nose and larger lips, then you are pretty, right? Because you have to say that an unambiguous dark skinned monoracial woman is pretty because if you don't, then obviously you are racist automatically. But if you have a lighter skin tone or if you're a mixed race, if you're a biracial person and you have those exact same features like Jay-Z, suddenly you are the ugliest thing out there. So notice how you can have broad features and 4C hair, similar to Jay-Z or even Blue Ivy. You can have broad features and type 4 hair and you will be called ugly. You will be told that your hair is ugly. Uh, you can have broader facial features like LMI and you will be told that you are not cute. You can have broader fa facial features like Lotto, aka black features and suddenly it's not cute. Or if you have ethnic features that are non-white looking like Hazel E and Kiki Wyatt, then it's suddenly not cute. But if I were to say those same comments about a dark skin unambiguous woman, then I would be called colorist, texturist, or featurist. So have you also noticed that in the reverse, that the dark skin standard of beauty or the types of beauty that they promote, they do tend to promote women who look kind of like a uh, uh, they kind of have thinner features, almost like the horn Africans, because I've noticed, for example, Lupita Nyong'o, who is considered pretty for an, an ambiguous woman, or she's considered pretty for that community or whatever. Um, I noticed that she does tend to have kind of a smaller nose and kind of smaller lips or whatever. She still looks monoracial and unambiguous, but if you are mixed race and you have those features, you're mediocre. And then if you're a mixed race and you have broad features, you are just straight up ugly. So it's like, have you noticed how the beauty standard is much more strict and much more narrow the lighter someone gets? The more mixed you start getting, the much more narrow the standards are. Basically, you have to look as white as possible. Otherwise, people will say things like, you're not that light skinned or you still look black in a negative way, of course. Or they'll say things like, oh, well, you know, your hair is nappy and like you shaved it off, Doja Cat, because you hate yourself. And oh, if you keep putting on all those wigs, Doja Cat, you're going to have no edges. They wouldn't say that type of comment to someone who had naturally type three hair and was light skinned. They only said that comment to Doja Cat because they have seen Doja Cat's natural hair and they know that she has type 4 hair. So now they're trying to make fun of it and humble her and say, you know, you wear all those wigs, you think you're cute now, but like once you take it off, you're going to have no edges. But imagine if I were to say that same comment to an unambiguous dark skinned black woman that, you know, once you take your wigs off, you're going to have no edges under that. I would be called all types of racist, colorist, texturist, and featurist. Anyway, I decided to do some research online and look at Lipstick Alley, which is known for uh, having a lot of black women congregate. And they went through all of the quote unquote light skinned or mixed women that they felt were ugly. So they mentioned people like Rain Pryor. They said that women like Hazel E. And once again, notice how all of those women, oh, some people, some people also mentioned Tisha Campbell and Tracy Ellis Ross. Some people mentioned uh, Tessa Thompson and Jessica Soar. 
So once again, notice how these are all mixed race women who tend to have non-white features, particularly their noses. I've noticed that when it comes to your nose, people like to scrutinize your nose when you are a light-skinned woman. If you have, if you do not have that thin Alicia Keys nose and you're light-skinned, it's going to be called out in the black community. People will call out your nose in particular if you are light-skinned. I've seen this pattern over and over again and nobody wants to talk about it. Why is it that all these women who are considered ugly, the one thing that I always notice about the women that they consider ugly is they always have a nose that is not thin. And when I say a, a thin nose, what I mean is that your nose takes up about one third of the ratio uh, to your lips. So think of women like Alicia Keys, think of women kind of like Jessica Alba. It means that, that your the width of your lips is about three times the width of your nose. I've noticed that if you are considered an ugly light skin, you don't have that ratio. AKA, you have a natural nose and you just haven't had a nose drop. You were simply a person of color with an ethnic nose. But has anyone else noticed how a lot of people will focus in on that part of your face in particular, if you are a light skinned person, they'll focus on the nose and I've also noticed your jawline as well. If you have a jawline as a woman and you have a lighter, a lighter complexion, Let's say your jawline is not the most narrow, you know, kind of, you don't have a Taylor Swift looking jawline is what I'm trying to say. Then you were automatically considered ugly because I've noticed that same pattern again. If you look at all of these women in the photo, they all have kind of a regular broad African-American um, jawline. So it's kind of a little bit more broad on the bottom. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it, by the way. I think it looks beautiful, but it only looks beautiful if you are dark skinned and unambiguous. If you're light skinned and have those same exact features, then suddenly you are ugly or you were considered below average compared to someone of your skin tone who has white features. So if that's not anti-blackness, colorism, texturism, and featureism, then I don't know what is. Because notice how if you are a dark-skinned person, like if you compare a dark-skinned person to a light-skinned person, that is colorism. But if you compare a half-white person who's, uh, who's darker, if you compare a half-white, darker, mixed-race person to a white person, then that's suddenly, that's not colorism, texturism, or featureism. Have you ever noticed that when black people are talking about other black people, you know, they're making themselves the standard. But when they're talking about a mixed race person, then suddenly whiteness is the standard. So the less you look like Taylor Swift, for example, the uglier you are. The more black you look when you are a mixed race, the uglier you're considered to, to be. That is extreme racism right there. Yeah, somehow we are the colorist, texturists, and featurists. I believe that colorism, texturism, and featureism is perpetuated against the mixed race community more than any other community. You know why? Because a lot of people don't even view mixed race as an actual race. And so this is why a lot of people feel like it's okay to make comments about people's hair textures or the size of their nose in particular. Has, have you ever had anyone talk about the size of your nose? Have you ever had anyone talk about the size of your jawline or your lips or anything like that? Have you ever had anyone make comments against you as a mixed race person that would be considered anti-black if you would have been dark skinned and unambiguous? Let me know in the comment section and I'll talk to you next time. Stay pretty ladies.